This episode is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. It's a special thing to be a member of Navy Federal because they are a member-owned, not-for-profit credit union that invests in its members with amazing rates and low fees. That's why members could earn and save more every year. Plus, they serve all branches of the armed forces, veterans, and their families. So if you're interested in becoming a member, learn more at NavyFederal.org. At Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Insured by NCUA. This Valentine's Day, Diamonds Direct is offering 20% off fashion jewelry. From now until February 14th, shop fashion favorites like classic diamond studs, cocktail rings, diamond necklaces, and more, and get 20% off your purchase. These fashion-forward designs instantly elevate any outfit. Shop in store or online through Valentine's Day and receive 20% off fashion jewelry. Your love, our passion. Online at DiamondsDirect.com. Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. Whether it's fun, plush, or tough toys for heavy chewers, we spoil all the dogs. Subscribe now and get a free upgrade at BarkBox.com slash iHeart. Episode 377, Should You Be Saving for Your Parents' Long-Term Care? With Lily Vitaya Rexkull. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, simplicity, and live a richer life. life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Mm, 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 mm. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about a super sexy topic, your parents' long-term care, or maybe Ooh. not even your parents, maybe your grandparents. I don't know. <laughs> so anybody in your life whose long-term care you may be impacted by, negatively or positively. We're not looking at this, uh, you know, like it's a worst-case scenario. We're looking at how in real life does this impact me and how can I take best practices to prepare for it, whether I have the financial stability in order to prepare, or I have to look at just preparing mentally or time-wise. We received such good feedback just about it being really helpful the last time we talked about this uh, Mm -hmm. topic, which was probably at least over a year ago. So we are definitely due for another one. But you know us, we got to go to the experts. And Lily is absolutely that. So we're, we're glad you selected this topic today that you you already kind of know what you're getting yourself into if you clicked yes on listening to this episode. Glad that you're here and I can almost guarantee you will walk away with something really helpful depending on whatever stage you're in and thinking and planning for this. Yes. Uh, but first, this episode is brought to you by Mega, specifically the biannual Mega Survey. It's 10 questions that will shape what you hear on this show and what you read in the friend letter and see in our social media over the next year. We want to be as helpful as possible to you in your journey to control your impulse spending and find your values and how to say yes to your values and no to the things you don't. We That is our ultimate goal. And so we need to know in what ways do you want us to show up? So we are sending out our biannual mega survey. And mega for us is 10 questions. So this survey is open now through February 9th. You will see a link to it in today's friend letter and all three friend letters next week. So if you want to have a direct role in shaping what we talk about, who we work with, and what we offer over the next year, then head to frugalfriendspodcast.com, get the friend letter, and you will see the link to the survey in the friend letter, to the mega survey in the friend letter. They are literally all multiple choice. This won't take a ton of your time, but will be extremely helpful in how we plan where to invest our time over the next year. Mega. There's so many ways to help us. You know, we like people writing us reviews and signing up for the friend letter. And right now, this is what we want. We want mega. We want you to answer 10 questions. 
That'd be so helpful. Completely anonymous and helps us so greatly. So like Jill said, the last time we talked about this was um, maybe maybe a year ago. Cameron Um, Huddleston? um, Well, that was even longer ago. So the last one we did was episode 285, How Your Parents' Finances Affect You and What to Do Next. And we referenced our interview with Cameron Huddleston, uh, which we did all the way back in episode 62. That was in 2019. (laughs) Still relevant. Still relevant. These, um, These two episodes aged very well, no pun intended. Uh, But (laughs) this is something that Jill and I, whenever we talk to each other, to our friends, this is always a topic that people are scared to talk about because they don't want to know, like, I don't think my mom or dad have saved for retirement, or I don't know how much they've saved. Uh, My, you know, my dad's having a health issue and doesn't want to talk about it. So there's, there's all of these barriers. And not talking about it, just like anything with money, but specifically this, has a direct impact on our lives and our finances. And this specifically has a a big impact on on our lives and even how we make money. My mom, when she was taking care of my grandmother and her end of life, was actually fired from her job Mm. because she was taking too much time off caregiving for my grandmother. Um, And so this has been a topic I have been super passionate about. And she was not able to save for her own retirement because of saving of of spending so much time and money on my grandmother's caregiving, you know, aside from other things. But this is such an important topic. You already know that if you're listening to it. But so we are bringing on Lily Vitorexkel to talk about all of the ways that there are to plan for long-term care. And so we're not just, we're not talking about your parents' retirement in this one, where we may have been talking about that in the last one. This is specifically, um, they're closer to end of life care. Um, and so I think this is the most important one. She's She sheds a lot of light on things that we may take for granted, um, covering these things, but also a lot of resources that if you're going to be somebody who's the physical caregiver for your parent, to be aware of. Um, We've got a link to more in the show notes. Um, But but Lily is a certifiable genius. She started college at 14, collaborated with NASA at 16, and she founded uh, her company Water Lily after a personal experience with a long-term care event in her family. And so this experience combined with her data science degree uh, from UC Berkeley and decade in healthcare is what led her to create Water Lily, which is this AI program where you can put in different aspects of your your life, your finances, your parents' life, finances, all of these things. And uh, it will create kind of like this template, not like rule, but like plan that you can start thinking about. Like this is theoretically how much money I will have to save or have to have this amount of care, Where's the hybrid approach? Like if I'm going to put in more physical hours, how much less do I have to say? It's it's a really cool program that I got to test out when I was at FinCon uh, last year. And it's and Lily's amazing. Water Lily is amazing. Um, and right now you can get on the, the wait list for it. Right now it's only available to certain financial planning professionals. But Lily is a wealth of knowledge that we wanted to bring on Um to, to just start to talk about, to reintroduce some of these topics. Let's talk to Lily. Lily, welcome to Frugal Friends. We're really excited to have this conversation. I'm super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. This is such an important conversation that even we on this podcast don't have enough. And it's so important to be talking with experts like yourself. So thanks for being here. And just to kick us off, dive in right off the bat, can you talk to us a little bit about why you why it's important for us to start planning for our parents' long-term care early on? Many of us think about it maybe as they need the care, but can you talk to us about being a little bit more proactive? Why early on? I think one way that's a really great question. One way to approach it is um, talking a little bit about what I've seen happen when you don't plan, you know, early on, actually, which is the opposite. So in in my case, in my personal experience, like we didn't plan early on, it just happened to us in my immediate family. 
and um, it lasted a little over two years. We had to navigate her care. We, it took it, you know, we had to take on a lot of physical caregiving hours as, ourselves. We had to do a ton of research on just like, you know, how to take care of her. You know, doctors weren't giving us, you know, all the instructions that we needed as well. Um, and it was a lot more expensive than we expected. And we spent a lot of money out of pocket that was not covered by, you know, our health insurance at all, which is like a huge surprise since most people make the assumption like, oh, healthcare, my health insurance is going to cover, you know, everything. And probably the most impactful reason why, you know, I started a company around this topic and trying to help families have better outcomes here by planning is because of the lack of um, emotional and psychological psychological preparation on this topic. And um, usually when you're in the thick of it, you're taking on all this like physical work, the financial um, uh, you know burden as well. It is also the lack of aligned perspectives on, you know, how should we be delivering care to like, let's just say my aging parents um, or how that person may want care. And if anything, they're probably scared psychologically. They never thought about it. And so, you know, that's where a lot of, um, you know, additional conflicts arrive and you have a lot of fights and it really strains a relationship. And so a lot of it is just this shock of all these things coming at you and the lack of resources you have at that time. And so that's why planning ahead of time is really important to address those those pieces. Understanding like what the requirements are of long-term care is a language that I think none of us want to become fluent in. It definitely means there's a lot of hardship and suffering at hand, which is probably one of the reasons we don't want to look at it. We think we're all going to be healthy for forever, not to mention thinking, well, these issues are going to come on later in life. And it's sounding like that was not your personal experience. And so when, when we even say like, start early on in your mind, what does that mean? Like how early on are we talking? Should we be thinking about long-term care for family members or maybe Mm -hmm. ourselves? Uh, We could definitely pull from best practices um, in the, you know, one of the industries that I'm in, which is in wealth management, where they have existing planning infrastructure actually in long-term care, which is really rare. Most industries, even the healthcare industry has a lack of planning infrastructure on this topic. And so what they do is they try to bring up the topic with any of their clients when they're in their 40s or 60s, because that's really the optimal time where, you know, you have um, a plan for your children. If you're having any, if you have any children about go, have, helping them go to college, you're at a point in which, you know, you've kind of hit the stride in your career where you actually have quite a bit of wealth and you're trying to figure out how do you strategically distribute it and your parents are getting older, you know, as well. And so that might be more of a top of mind topic. So for a client themselves, um, we usually see them plan on behalf of themselves, like 40s to 60s as the best practices. But in terms of on behalf of their aging parents, if they're not interested in doing it for themselves, their parents are definitely, you know, on the precipice of needing care over the next like five to 15 years. And given how expensive it is, we might want to start to strategically think about like, are we going to financially support them? Or do they have enough? And even if they have enough, like, are they aware of like how to use those financial resources to kind of get the care resources, you know, they're looking for as well? It's sounding like if we have family that we're planning for, then yes. now now is when we need to be thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, I, we talk so much about emergency funds and how when you have an emergency fund, then these emergencies that can be crises and quite traumatizing, they become more inconveniences. And so this is kind of like a similar concept on a greater scale because taking care of aging parents, it's going to happen eventually. And it can either be something that like for your family, Lily, was was super traumatizing, was a very hard season uh, because of the lack of planning, because of the lack of um, knowledge about it. But if you do put in some planning and at least prepare yourself, even if you can't prepare financially, but you are just preparing yourself with knowledge it takes a little bit of the burden off anything you can do. And I think it's a scary topic that we don't want to learn about because it makes it too too real. Um, But like, so what are some of the things that we should know about like long-term care for our parents or for us? Like costs, like anything, what what are you trying to, what do you think is the most important things that people should know and be educated on? 
I think that there's definitely, um, you know, stepping into it from an intuitive side. And then there's stuff that is like definitely not intuitive that I could talk about. But like intuitively, actually, we take care of people all the time in our lives, whether it's like the children that we have and we've raised them and you kind of know what went into that. And it's a lot of work to like take care of them physically, financially have enough so that, you know, they could be like supported and then supporting them like throughout their life. Like what are some resources they need? It's a, or you might have like pets or you might have really good friends where they've been in a pickle or they've gotten surgery and you've taken care of them. So I think that a lot of us have at least like one experience of taking care of another person, whether it's like a sibling, family member, friend, or, you know, an animal. And in in that sense, you kind of intuitively understand like, what does it take for, you know, to sustainably take care of someone or something. Um, and then like kind of like leading into that a little bit more, it's like when it comes to taking care of our aging parents or thinking about it on behalf of our them, um, of ourselves, that's where I have the same three pillars, uh, you know, to focus on, which is like the financial piece. Big one is a lot of people assume that Medicare is going to cover everything. When I turn 65 and then when I grow older, like I have free Medicare and I could always buy, you know, supplemental plans on top of that. And the supplemental plans on top of that, let's just like, most people don't know how expensive that is, you know, to, to actually buy those health plans. And even then, if you were to, you know, have like, uh, issues with basic things that keep you independent, whether it's like doing your laundry or walking or like walking around or having mobility issues, um, essentially because you've grown older and your body physically is like more like frail, then that's where, uh, you know, getting help there is not exactly medical care. Um, and there's some caveats of like, you know, if something happened, like you fell down, you broke a hip, then you went to the hospital um, and you're, you were there for a certain period of time. And then you get rehab after that, that is covered, but only up to um, last time I checked only up to like a hundred days. And then the rest of that time that you may need, especially if it's now a per- permanent disability, you now have to pay for that out of pocket, whether, you know, either your family is like, uh, you know, paying for it by taking care of you by like, you know, living near you or living like at the house and helping you physically, um, since you have a disability that you can be independent, um, or you have to pay for what's called a professional caregiver uh, to help, you know, physically take care of you. And I know that in addition to that, um, when you grow older, you might also have cognitive issues as well, where you thought I can manage my money up until the point in which like, you know, I pass. And that's just like not true. You might have cognitive issues that might make you a liability to even your like financial assets as well. So learning, um, you know, who do you trust with your assets that like might be your like a really good friend that's younger than you or, you you know, your daughter or your son, um, or when you cognitively can't make decisions for yourself, like anymore about like, you know, the type of care that you actually want to receive. I want to age at home, or I'm open to going into like, you know, a community where I want to socialize more. Having someone else know those preferences ahead of time, um, and you name them legally as a proxy for you to make those decisions is actually really key to kind of getting the quality of life that you're still looking for and, and aging in a really dignified you know, way as like some light thing. So lightly touched on like uh, like physical, financial, like emotional, like psychological stuff. Yeah, no, those are all like important things to be aware of when you're thinking about long term care. You might remember from our Budget Apps episode, we mentioned Monarch Money as being one of the best apps for people switching from Mint. Monarch is the top-rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, cash flow, net worth, and more. Listeners of this show will get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com frugal. If you previously used Mint and are worried about transferring your data, Monarch has a tool that allows you to easily import your data from Mint, keeping all your tags and categories intact. It's also super customizable. After trying out Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, listeners of this show will get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash frugal. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash frugal for your extended 30-day free trial. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. 
So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. This Valentine's Day, Diamonds Direct is offering 20% off fashion jewelry. From now until February 14th, Shop fashion favorites like classic diamond studs, cocktail rings, diamond necklaces, and more, and get 20% off your purchase. These fashion-forward designs instantly elevate any outfit. Shop in store or online through Valentine's Day and receive 20% off fashion jewelry. Your love. Our passion. Online at DiamondsDirect.com. So can you say a little bit about some of the different care choices for elderly parents and how one might pick the right one financially? Like there are so many layers that can be present in those three pillars that Mm -hmm. you've talked about, but what are some of the choices available for folks? So I could tell you the way, you know, we've broken it down um, in my company as a way to effectively try to bring up the conversation. And I look at it from um, ultimately uh, foundationally from like care hours and care span perspective, meaning like, you know, can we get a sense of like how much hours of care are you going to like need, uh, you know, overall. And we estimate that as well as, um, you know, how long are you going to have, like, you know, your care needs, you know, for, um, so under that like foundation of just like, okay, looking at it from like how many hours of care am I going to need for like what period of time, then we could, break that down into like uh, the level of care needs. There's three levels of care needs that we break it down into, which is like, um, you know, activities, like there's this concept of, you know, activities of daily living, meaning, you know, activities that you need to be able to do to be considered independent. So things like being able to, uh, you know, go, uh, being able to walk across the room, being able to get out of bed, being able to go to the bathroom by yourself, take a shower by yourself, like things that we intuitively know is like really hard to do if we ever had a knee surgery or something else where we have like mobility issues. Um, and so there's about six of those activities of daily living. And so for us, we break down care needs in terms of like, okay, like if you have one to two, um, you know, activity, like, you know, uh, ADL, I call them like, I guess acronym is like ADLs. Like if you have one to two ADLs, I call that early care phase. And what's really important about calling it that way is because, or breaking it down in that structure is because different, um, you know, environments where you want to age, whether it's aging at home or going to a community center, or even thinking about nursing home, they have different requirements for the level of care need that you have. And so I break it down into like one to two activities of daily living. You have like issues with like one to two of them or three to four or five to six. That's how you cleanly understand just like different environments that fit those um, care needs. And on top of that, like those different care structures, whether it's like aging at home or um, going into like some sort of community or facility center have different payment structures as well. So if you age at home, I think about it from an hourly cost perspective, like you look for like hourly professional caregivers that can help out outside of you. Um, You can look that up easily online. Um, Then then when it comes to like community centers where they're called like independent living or assisted living, um, they cover, you know, one to two ideas, three to four, and that's paid on a monthly basis. So you can actually look at the cost of like them as well. Um, and then finally, like nursing home that really uh, like differs depending on if you want to like have your own room or you're willing to share a room like for budget reasons. And, um, and you could get that cost publicly online, but it's helpful to kind of like you know, really break up um, those three sections because you can get a lot more precise about budgeting as well. Because a lot of people assume like, oh, you know, let's assume, you know, three and a half years of like nursing home, like national statistics, wouldn't you? There are hidden costs before that leading up to you having like nursing home level help. 
Your website is so helpful in also breaking down some of the things that you're talking about here because it can be really hard to wrap your mind around really what ifs, assuming that you're not in the position where you're trying to play catch up, but you're being proactive and looking into what might I need to be prepared for. It's hard to know exactly. And so I think having experts like you who can talk about averages and desires and where you might fall on the scale is so, so helpful. And it occurred to me as I was going through your website that it almost might be a helpful tool to even be navigating these conversations with our parents and to be able to like have a blueprint of how to move through it because that can be a massive barrier too. I could be all gung-ho about let's have this conversation. I just listened to a podcast. But then there's resistance for any number of reasons. But what have you seen as far as how to have these conversations with parents on these different layers and topics? And what do they want? How have Mm -hmm. you encouraged people to begin? Um, There are a couple ways. Well, I'll first start off by sharing like a lot of us are when we think about taking care of our aging parents, like we're we have a lot on our plate, right? You know, we're in like our 30s to 50s, we're in like the thick of our career, we're trying to build out like, you know, our own wealth, we're trying to budget appropriately for our own lifestyle. And then when we think about like, oh, well, you know, what about my aging parents? They might be like pretty like we might immediately think oh are they like financially pretty well off or like financially a little bit more frugal and like they're you know kind of like getting by that is like probably the immediate thought process of like oh you know if they were to like need more help anyway can I like am I physically capable of like you know stepping in to like help out just given all the other responsibilities in my life as well as oh well if they're going to start needing help and if they might need to go to a lot of people assume a nursing home or if they go into a community or, or or staying at home but they need some help there if I can't physically help them you know do they have enough finances to like pay for someone to come and you know help them out you know instead and so um when it comes to you know how do people try to bring up having a conversation with their parents or when is the right time it really depends on the person um i think that um a lot of the motivation ends up falling on unfortunately the children of like aging parents like ourselves, because it's just the truth of the matter is that like a lot of parents um, who are part of like the baby boomer generation or the like the silent generation, like right now, they've never really talked about that. It was almost assumed that like communally, like we would step in, like it was just like in, like in the past, like, like family structures were a lot closer. And I think that culturally that meant that, oh, if you're nearby, we know we help each other out whenever like we need to. And we just live in a completely different society now. We're a part of, you know, being able to build our wealth um, and build, like be responsible for our lifestyles, meaning means that we have to find careers where oftentimes it's like on, you know, polarized to the coastal cities is like what I've like seen. And so now these are new concepts that we have to think about, which is like, if I can't, you know, go move to the Midwest to take care of like my mom in some way, you know, what will happen because like, is, do I have to financially pay for that? Well, I have to plan that ahead of time that like, like several like years in advance, like 10 to 15 years, because it's expensive. Like long-term care mm-hmm. is easily a six digit figure number. and so quickly getting a sense or, or finding the right skill sets to try to talk to your parents about financially, what can you afford and what are your preferences is important. Um, in terms of like gently trying to guide into that conversation, what I've found really helpful with the families that I've interviewed and and talked to or within my company is, um, first off, if you could get a sense of their, pers- the, you know, our parents' perspective in some way, because I made some assumptions about culturally, they grew up in like this structure, but it, like they might just be very like extremely, you know, independent um, or they might like, and so that might mean like, oh, well, they financially have enough or it just might mean they're so independent that they don't want to receive anyone's help, even if they financially can't support that. Or, like, okay, that's a trickier situation or they might be really social and, um, and you might think like, well, they're really social, but like, you know, dad is starting to have like mobility issues. So what's going to happen to mom, like, you know, afterwards. Um, And so being able to just generally get their perspective around like, oh, how's retirement going? You know, uh, 
What are some goals that you have around retirement? You can quickly get the sense of they've thought about this or not already. Um, and you could always start the conversation gently by being really respectful and really non-confrontational and saying like, hey, I, you know, I learned about this concept of like long-term care. You know, I think everyone's going to age. And I saw some statistics here that were surprising to me. I don't know if you've already thought about this. It's a light way to kind of like say, I got, I learned something today. I don't know if you already know it to get a sense of like, you know, their um, knowledge on it. And um, I think the most important piece is, you know, when you do bring up the topic and they're kind of open to talking about like aging, considering their preferences and needs is like actually really important, which is like, uh, you know, ask like fundamental questions that we ask are, you know, how would you want to prioritize, uh, you know, having how would you want to prioritize your financial security versus, you know, getting your care needs met as you age? Like, for example, so they might say like, oh, you know, I want to, I want to make sure I have as much wealth as possible, no matter what. And it's okay if it comes at the cost of like, you know, my care needs, I'll figure something out. Or on the other extreme, they're just like, actually, like, no, I actually really care about like, you know, aging with like dignity and want to have all quality resources as much as possible. And I'm willing to pay whatever it takes to get there. Then there's a question. I think the other second fundamental question is like getting a sense of like, hey, you know, when you grow older, do you want to like, how, how would you want us? Like, would you, have you thought about how you want your family members involved in your care in some way? And so from there, you lightly get a sense of like, oh, I really don't want, I want minimal involvement. I don't want you guys touching me. I don't want anything of that to happen. Or they might say, I really hate the idea of a stranger, you know, you know, stepping in and touching me in any way. And then that will give you a sense of just like, what are their expectations already on you that you could start from? Yeah, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. I found a good segue. It, my mom is currently taking care of her mother. And so she's in that stage, which has provided a nice segue for me to be able to talk with my mom about that. That. Hey, in your caregiving role, here's what I'm seeing. What's that like for you? What do you want? Like, and I know that's not everybody's situation, but wherever we can find those segues as you're identifying can be helpful. Yeah, I I notice. So, like, even if you're you're parent isn't even in a current caregiving role, if they have been previously in a caregiving role, or they might have somebody at their office um, or in their community who is in a caregiving role. And if they bring that up, that's a great segue into talking about like, oh, is like, how's your friend complaining about this? Is that like, how would you, you know, want it done? And so that, so any, any time that's in their lives, because it's so, I, everybody I talk to in our age group, uh, millennials, their parents did not save for retirement. And I, so I don't, and I'm sure that I live in like a select, I can't say that that's for everyone, but for the people I interact with personally, we know that some kind of caregiving is going to fall on us. And so, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like 40s is a good, really good time to start thinking about this and planning this, like really front loading our own personal retirement. Time in the market is going to you know beat timing the market. And so, yes, really set yourself up first. But the earlier you can start asking these questions and getting an idea, um, for like what your parents' preferences are and and really tempering their expectations too. Um, and, and saying like, oh, you you think that I'm going to be caregiving 100%. This is really what I'm going to be able to do. So it gives them time to temper their expectations as well, even if they may not have the capacity to save enough in that, you know, limited time span, they can start getting used to an idea of like, oh, we're we're collectively not going to have enough money for all the care I expected to be able to afford because inflation is is crazy and and it has really changed a lot of people's like budgets for long-term care, right? So like when we're looking at this, they can say like, I'm not okay, we're not going to have the money to do everything, these are the things that are most important to me, right? Or to say like, oh, my my children are not going to be able to participate in the capacity I assumed. Let's let's think of other ways. And so it just, even if financially we can't get all we want or give all we want in time, I think at, at least like I think tempering expectations or managing expectations is one of the most important things 
in this conversation because like I it these conversations did not go the way I thought they would when I had with my mom. So it's not just tempering like their expectations, but it's also tempering yours. It may take you five plus years to get the answers to these questions <laughs> that you want. Like it's the, your parents like may not come up like just may not be willing to up front. Like is that Lily, like when you are talking to clients, like how how do those conversations go? Is that something like you've heard? It's it's so interesting. Like I actually really love the way you structured it, which is like how do we temper our own expectations? Like how do we temper our parents' expectations? But then you're like, how do we temper how do I temper my own expectations? I'm like, I think I'm gonna live this lifestyle when in truth that's like, well, if you have a existing relationship with your parents, especially, like they're definitely gonna have a say in like probably what your lifestyle is going to look like in order to like continue having a relationship with them as well. And as our needs grow. Um, and so what I've seen is like, it's, it's across the spectrum, um, of just like from, you know, individuals saying like, Oh, my parents actually are prepared. And I, I didn't expect it when I brought up the topic, they actually had a, a binder or a list of like all the, like, you know, um, just like their preferences of like, how do they want to age? If, a, you know, if something happened where they fell down and, and broke a hip, like what was that one pager on just like, um, you know, who to call and like, uh, like how to get access to like my finances, et cetera. And then if they also, what's really important is like, do they have a do not resuscitate form as well? Which is like, do they actually want to be like, uh, you know, do they want to sustain their life for as long as possible? Or do they care about actually the quality of their life? And they're just like, I don't really care about how long I live. I actually care about, you know, I don't want to live. I want to minimize my suffering for as long as I live. That's, that's, it's just totally like, you know, they are really great communicators around their preferences when they get older and um, this major risk that may happen. Then on the other side of the spectrum, it is a, oh, you know, I like, I have a lot of, I have a, I have a troubled relationship with my mom and she's growing older and she's really narcissistic. Um, and she lives by herself and she won't talk to anyone else but me. And so, in that case, um, and I've seen things in between of just like, oh, you know, like my parents lightly talk to me about it to your point. And like over five years, I kind of get what I'm like, you know, looking for, you know, here. And I think that I love the concept that you brought up, which is like, you know, you have to put on your own oxygen mask first um, and then see what you could do in, in, from a financial perspective and then see what you could do financially for them, but try to get ahead of any surprises. Um, and so I think the concept of like really understanding yourself and what you're capable of doing and what are your like what do you like what do you want to do but then what are you capable of doing and really understanding that and so being educated ahead of time of of you know what are your likely roles I, either as a financial caregiver as a physical caregiver or a care coordinator for your parents and your capacity to do any of those things could be really effective um and actually even talking to your parents about like factually like i'm not even good at this or factually i am like good at this but i have um a 40-hour commitment and i have to take care of my kids and so i want to try to figure out how to make this sustainable with you so i think being able to com communicate really clearly of like what your boundaries are what your preferences what are your skill sets in being a you know a type of caregiver um is really uh helpful to bring to the table you know as as well to kind of get the logistics smooth yeah that communication piece is sounding so important and mm -hmm. i think even beyond I can hear these conversations and some of why I avoid it is because I know I'm not ready to financially, physically, with my time and capacity, be able to provide care, but all the more reason to talk now to be able to prepare. But also this reality that it may not all have to fall on me and knowing what the different resources are now, doing the research, having the conversations doesn't mean that we have to have all of the readiness currently, I think is what's standing out to me from our conversation. But speaking of communication mm. and transparency and setting expectations. Yes. And uh, this is a conversation that an answer we get every week instantly. The Bill of the Week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. 
Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Lily, every week we invite our guests and our listeners to share with us their bill for the week. And we would love to hear yours today. So um, in terms of bills, I literally had to use actually like we live in a very digital era. I physically actually had to use bills just yesterday because, you know, I was furnishing my new home and um, there's a variety of neighbors around me that I was like picking up some stuff for them and some used Venmo and some, you know, used Cash App, but there's a lot of them actually that used cash and they're like, well, if you have cash and, you know, like, you know, this will work and I'm like, oh my God, do I have cash? (laughs) And so that was... um, super helpful for me this week to actually have like literal dollar bills on hand um, in order to uh, like financially transact with certain, you know, individuals that are, to be fair, older than me. Yes. Yes. I mean, there is a certain saying that cash is king. (laughs) <laughs> but it is nice uh, actually to have literal dollar bills, five dollar <laughs> bills, twenty dollar bills. It's I not mean, a saying I use. It's not, but we do we do love a green a green <laughs> bill. Oh, I love finding them on the ground. You you uh-huh. actually I can't believe that you would not say that because you expect every time uh-huh. you go outside to find to bills. find cash uh-huh. on the ground. Yeah, it's like to me when I this is why the envelope system never worked for me. It would, spending cash money feels like it's not even it's real yeah. because there's no way of tracking it. So it doesn't even, it doesn't even count. You could do anything That's nefarious with it finance. on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Did you buy furniture? Maybe, but we'll never know. No one will the know. Facts. They'll never find out. Uh, that's awesome, Lily, that you're using Facebook Marketplace to furnish your home. It's a great way to cut costs, avoid buying new, hopefully save some of that money for long-term caregiving of parents. If you all listening have a bill that you want to share with us, if it has to do about those green back bills, the, the football team, the just a person named Bill. We keep it vague on purpose. Frugalfriendspodcast.com slash Bill. We are ready for it. This Valentine's Day, Diamonds Direct is offering 20% off fashion jewelry. From now until February 14th, shop fashion favorites like classic diamond studs, cocktail rings, diamond necklaces, and more, and get 20% off your purchase. These fashion-forward designs instantly elevate any outfit. Shop in store or online through Valentine's Day and receive 20% off fashion jewelry. Your love, our passion. Online at DiamondsDirect.com. Hey guys, Rob Parker here and everybody knows it. Toyota trucks are the stuff of legends. Rugged, durable, everlasting. Toyota makes trucks that just don't quit. And now Toyota is driving that legacy toward the future with two of their most powerful trucks ever. The new Tundra and the all new Tacoma. In a half a ton Tundra, you can rule the road from the comfort of a spacious cabin with connected tech and plenty of hauling power power. The Tundra is ready to work hard and play even harder. Or check out the all-new 24 Tacoma, redesigned and electrified to maximize your adventure. With a bevy of available off-road driving and power transfer modes, you will effortlessly crush the condition. And with the Tacoma's reimagined interior, you'll do it in style. And right now, your local Toyota dealer has more vehicles in stock and is making delivery on new vehicles almost every day. So don't wait. Buy a Tundra or Tacoma today. Visit buyatoyota.com for deals and more. Toyota, let's go places. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett, and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix. Sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions, we hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. 
I can't fix this. I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the mycenae, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can't ever have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for the, the lightning, lightning round. round. Pew, 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 pew. All right. So in this lightning round, we are all going to share a little brief synopsis of how we are doing this in real life, how it really looks for us. Uh, and so basically, how does planning for your parents' long-term care fit into your long-term savings strategy? Um, Lily, you you are the creator of this AI that does uh, long-term care planning, so we will <laughs> let you go first. Um, so I'll share a little bit about like my parents. They are first generation immigrants. They tried to like script like, you know, like every dollar that they can, but they're also not very communicative of like financially, like how are they, you know, doing. And so I have three other siblings. And so we actually talk pretty often about like the emotional state of our parents. Like, how are they doing? Are they socializing enough? You know, are like, do they have something that keeps them busy? But also secondly, is like, if they were to grow older and like need help, like we talked about like like, what are our skill sets in that? Like, just like, you know, my sister's a doctor, so she would probably like step in like for care coordination. She's also the closest. So she would step in for physical caregiving. So I've gotten ahead of and told her, hey, like you're already stressed out as a doctor and 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 stuff like that. And I know that you want to like go visit them and do things. And I'm worried about you burning out because if you burn out, like who's kind of like next in line to help out and can we be effective like in that? And so I've already developed a light plan with like my siblings about like, you know, what seems to make sense um as well as you know let's talk about plan b and plan c what if they need to care sooner than expected you know we're trying to build our our own financial wealth like you know how would we pot in money together to try to figure this out for our parents um what are additional strategies that they don't already know so we already have a plan and all these like plan b's and plan c's and resources that we could talk about and be flexible on as soon as our parents become like incrementally more and more ready to talk about you know aging and how they're trying to do that Hmm. That's oh, that's can be the blessing of having siblings. Of course, you also have the possibility of siblings who are disinterested <laughs> in <laughs> helping in that regard. But it is great when you have some camaraderie and desire for for teamwork and who can kind of handle what and who has what skill set. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well done. I was just gonna say that that's like how I do it for like like listeners that don't have access to our software, but I've also put in my parents' information into my software. So mm -hmm. I kind of know around what age should we be prepping for, how much it's likely going to cost, um, how long it's going to go on for. So that gives me a sense of like, how sustainable is it going to actually be for my sister if she was like the primary caregiver as well. So that's been really helpful for me strategically to kind of get all those pieces laid out. But I cheated in that case. But yeah, Jen, Jen love to hear what you do. I mean, I don't think you cheated. Y you You had to like build out all of the cheat. You had to build the cheat code. So, yeah. That um, counts for something. Yeah, I think you took the long way around. Um, so, for me, my mom um, has very little save for retirement. Like, um, it would not even last her a year. I am so proud of her that she did, after I started writing about personal finance and hosting a post personal finance podcast, she started saving for retirement. Yay. Um, so super proud of her. That was only in the past like five years though. So um, we are planning and I am an only child um, planning to be her primary caregivers in whatever way that looks like. Um, so thankfully I've set up my life to have a flexible job where most of it will be me like physically caregiving um and thankfully my husband's parents they're going to be good to go they have a business they're going to sell it is a thriving business that people already want to buy um and then their daughter my sister-in-law 
is also very close to them um, and is just a natural caregiver. So thankfully, we don't have two sets of parents to worry about, um, just mine. So um, we invested in a second home so that we can get some passive income and possibly if we need to like house her at all. Um, But we're hoping to sell one of them for a profit that and that profit would cover her long term care, the, the financial part of her long term care. So that is our plan. The Alternative Legion, um, I'll just also share some resources, which is a lot of people don't know about like the states like AAA, you know, agencies are like area on aging and they, they tend to have a ton of free resources that actually come from the Medicaid, you know, bucket of cash. Um, so you don't even have to be qualified for like Medicaid to have access to some free local resources where they could probably transport food to your mom, you know, for free. Or there might be some people that could come to the house or, um, you know, there are probably some programs to do home renovations. I know aging out home is huge. So I would keep an eye out for government programs that are getting bigger and bigger on like stuff like that. And then separately, like if you don't have to pay out of like, you're not obligated to pay out of pocket. There is still that safety net of like qualifying for like Medicaid based off of like, you know, wherever your mom wants to live and she really doesn't have enough saved up. She can quickly get access to that. And the most efficient way if you go down that path is with an elder law attorney. Oh, nice. Okay. What's the, what website can people find um, like federal programs that would be applicable to their area? Yeah. So I, so um, government (laughs) pages are like not super friendly. And so on, um, on my websites, on my websites blog, like joinwaterlily.com slash blog, um, we actually have a section that's called government programs. And so we actually talk a lot about just like the layout of like what you can start to look into. And we point to some sources to make it easy to like understand um, the structure there. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll link to that um, page in our show notes as well. That's super helpful. Yeah. So for me, I am having some of these conversations with my mom, although Lily, you are highlighting the there's room for more. I think my mom and I have primarily discussed more the financial side of things, but not necessarily dug deep into when her needs go beyond financial needs, what is that going to look like? We've talked, I will be her primary caregiver. We've talked about her moving closer to me. Um, But beyond that, haven't said much. So, uh, but as far as finances go, I mean, she thankfully has been very transparent with me about what she has currently. We've talked some strategy about the way that we can leverage what she does have and the amount of working years she has left. And for myself, she actually doesn't know this. I don't know why I'm keeping it a secret. Maybe because I'm like <laughs> concerned about uh, how much I can set aside. Although she's listening to this podcast. Here here you go, mom. If she's um, going to listen to one, it's going to be this one. It's probably going to be this one. Yeah. <laughs> I do, whenever possible, set small amounts of money aside monthly into a high yield savings account to be able to earn some interest on that money. It's not a lot, but it's one of those things like if she does move down here, we've got a chunk of change to help with housing or maybe monthly needs, that kind of a thing. So my mind has been primarily on the financial aspect, but it's helpful to remember, yes, there are physical and emotional aspects to this too, that I think there's more room for conversation for me. So thanks for the insight you've brought to the table today. Jill, um, quickly on that note, I loved how you just said I put money aside in a high yield savings account because a lot of people don't understand the concept of the time value of money. And they think like, oh, you know, I'll save up what I can. And then if I need to pay out, then I'll pay out at that time. And we built out this calculator within our software that makes it so incredibly obvious that we're not talking about normal inflation rate. Like actually let's talk about long-term care costs real quick. Um, A lot of people assume that, oh, it's going to, you know, grow at the same rate of, you know, inflation, 3%. But actually healthcare inflation rate, if you look at the actuarial tables, is closer to what's projected for the next 10 years, 6.05%. And so what that actually means in layman terms is that the amount of money that you're going to need is going to double every 12 years. And so actually putting money away today that actually is growing is 
is is makes a massive impact on how much the monthly contribution is going to start looking like if you started today versus if you started five years from now, 10 years from now, or something like that. The other thing I'll take into account when you do budget is where you're putting that money. Um, because you could pull you could pull money from a high yield savings account, but if you wanted to like invest it, like really understand what your tax bracket is, is really pr- crucial. Um, and if you don't have like a long-term care policy, which is usually tax advantage, if you pay for this out of pocket, um, understand your tax bracket and understand what portion of the funds that you probably be pulling for long-term care expenses are qualified assets, not qualified ac- a- assets and not taxable like Roths. Um, so I wanted to just put that out there. It's like light things to research to optimize the budgeting. Lily, you are a wealth of knowledge and we're so grateful for you spending time with us today. When people absolutely need more from you, where can they go? So you can definitely uh, contact us. Contact, actually, it goes directly to me. When you go to our website, joinwaterloo.com, you're like, hey, I want to contact someone or reach out. Like, I love talking to all sorts of individuals. And so I get that email directly and I try to be really responsive. Um, and if someone immediately is just like, Hey, I just need help. Then you're welcome to just email me at like Lily at joinwaterlily.com because sometimes there's just families that I've been following for a long time where they need resources. And I'm just like here to like offer them. Of course, I just say like, I'm not a financial professional, I'm not an elder law attorney, but I do come from a little over a decade's worth of experience and like healthcare. And I've, I've seen like a wealth of resources, like in the space. So I could just pass that along without any sort of like uh, commissions or incentives. It's just uh, like, yeah, I love to be helpful if I can. So kind. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on today. It was a yeah. pleasure. And and where can people, if they want to like put their uh, data into Water Lily, like where can they find access to to that? So that's a great question. Um, it's the same thing. Go to our website, joinwaterloy.com, and you click on just like sign up or like contact us because we're actually actively building out a wait list right now for a self-service model where I don't believe in families actually paying for this software. I think that there is so many government programs and so many other businesses that um, are trying to serve families. I think they should subsidize the cost, if not just pay on behalf of these families. And so we want to see, um, I'm, I'm actually building out business relationships right now to see how can we make this free for families to build a plan on um, and get some really strategic, uh, great conversations there to have better outcomes on the topic. That's Beautiful. awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lily. And uh, yeah, hope everybody goes to uh, joinwaterlily.com and starts thinking about this really important, really tough topic. Oh, I got some takeaways. So much to consider here. I, again, it still feels weighty and heavy for me. It's mm-hmm. one of those... <gasps> I got to do that. I know I got to do that. But it does help to have other voices talking about it and the ability to kind of bounce ideas off of other people, know that I'm not alone in it when it's just something I'm thinking about in my own home. But Mm -hmm. then to be able to chat with you, to chat with Lily, to know that there's a plethora of other people out there so excited about this resource that Lily's creating through Water Lily. I'm just, I'm so thrilled. And I've got a lot of my own takeaways. So I'm also excited for our community and the takeaways really tangibly Mm -hmm. that can happen out of this episode. Yeah, I think reiterating that it is definitely important to focus on your own life raft or your own oxygen mask, like in your youth, your 20s and your 30s, for sure, you want to get time in the market. And and which is why it's so important to start investing early, right? Like we don't want to ignore investing for the sake of buying things and paying off debt. We need to be starting that early because in our 40s is when we need to start thinking about, okay, how do other people's finances affect me at this point? You know, like maybe it's not, maybe my own parents are fine, but what about my partner's finances, right? And then maybe even like if I want to contribute to my children's finances, um, you know, what am I doing there? So it just reiterates how important it is to start investing for yourself early so that when when this topic comes up, it's not nauseating. It's just um, inconvenient, right? And I'll take I'll take inconvenient and maybe a bit of a bummer 
over nauseating and anxiety inducing. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We do hope that this was a fruitful, beneficial conversation for you. And as you know, we do have a newsletter. It's called The Friend Letter because we love to tell our friends about all that's happening with the freebies and the savings tips. It goes out three times each week, and we talk life hacks, all sorts of money tips that just help you save money, spend better, all the things we talk about in the show, but then readable. So depending on how you learn and you want to see visuals and graphics, we got it for you. We also want to give a shout out to this friend for sending us this sweet email last week in response to the friend letter. I hope this finds you well, Jen and Jill. I just listened to your latest episode on contentment, and I really appreciated your vulnerability lightning round pertaining to motherhood, as well as your thoughts on contentment pertaining to parenthood throughout the episode. Love the podcast, and I'm so encouraged every time I listen to you both. You are both so inspiring, and it makes me feel like I am not alone in my debt payoff journey. I also really appreciate the email encouragement for No Spend January to keep me motivated and reminded me of why I'm doing this. Thanks, Kara. Oh, Kara, you are welcome. I am I am here to be relatable about motherhood. <laughs> yes. I am the most average mother and super, super proud of it. I think everybody feels that way. Like, yeah. If there's anything I hear from especially moms, it's that uh, mom, gu- mom guilt. I'm oh, not doing this absolutely. perfectly. I'm not doing it well. So everyone's going to call themselves average, but yeah. y'all are out here crushing if you're keeping your kids alive and Amen. fed with something, just Amen. something. Something is really my my cuisine. It's my forte. <laughs> uh, so thank if, you, Kara. If you all are hearing this and you want in on this community of emails and you want the freebies, you want to know what you can get for free each week, you want the savings tips, you want the values-based spending hacks, and you want the stupid graphics sent to your inbox every week, head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash friend letter to get all of the goodies. And if you already do get the goodies, if you're like, I got them goodies, uh, share it with your friends. Give them some goodies. And yeah. take the mega survey. Take the mega, mega survey. <laughs> yeah, there's a link at the end of the friend letter that you can share. It's your specific referral link. When you send that and you get someone to sign up, you get goodies in addition to the friend letter, which is a goodie and a whole snack mm-hmm. in and of itself. You get stickers or a tote or a mug, depending on how many people you refer. Yes. So go wild. And we want to know what you want to hear on Frugal Friends and in the friend letter in the upcoming year. So please, we will... We are literally willing to share almost anything except for our credit card numbers and our our social security account numbers. Like pretty much anything else is on the table. So like, please tell us what you want. I I mean, I will share also anything about Jill's life other than those (laughs) things. So just tell me. The emails go to me. The mega survey goes to me. I just need to know. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. Um, I mean, I feel kind of offended that you call the graphics stupid. In I a good them. way. I, I use that word adoringly. I, it is something that people complain about. Um, not really? complain about, but they're just like, you don't need as many graphics. You're like beautiful without all the filters. And I'm like, but I love the filter. filters. Filters? I mean, in our I mean, email? No, I, that's a joke. I, they're oh. just like, the content's good enough. You don't need to like oversaturate it with all this stuff. And I was like, but I like this. Uh-huh. Stuff. It's, it's like, how I drive I, home my point. I don't need the makeup, but I like the makeup. I'm not wearing any makeup right now. We, like, <laughs> it, we look like Thursday. That's. <laughs> I have been wearing the same pants all, all week. week. Yes. Jen has finally come over to co work with me. Uh, which we'd have to talk about that, that okay, too. Yeah. Okay. So this is for you all listeners who are still here with us because you the you the true ones. You you the real ones. So Jen and I typically do not record together, even though we live 15 minutes apart. Sh- we call in. Some of that has to do with it's more complicated to capture audio in in person together than it is over the computer I mean, call internet. It what it is. We lazy. But 
Jen has finally been coming over and co-working with me. It's been amazing. We just obviously recorded this episode together. Come to find out, we are coming up on six years of podcasting together. I've lived here for three and a half and you hardly ever come over and work from here, partially because I've been under renovation, but my kitchen's been done for a year. Jen just told me this week that one of her main barriers to not coming and co-working at my house where our studio is, is because I don't have a microwave. This is a fact. Everyone knows how I feel about microwaves. And how Jill previously felt about microwaves. <laughs> I just didn't use them. I'm not like morally opposed to microwaves. I just didn't use them, didn't have them. But now I do have one. Again, my kitchen's been done for a year. Jen didn't know I had a okay. microwave. In my defense, it looks like you have a double oven on the wall. Like that is a normal thing. Kitchens get renovated. They install Double, Double ovens, ovens, right? Yeah. And your microwave opens like an oven, looks like an oven. If it quacks like a duck, <laughs> it typically is a duck. I've just never opened it to yeah. look inside and see that it is a microwave. Yeah. And all of that is fair. It does make sense. My microwave does look like an oven and it also is a convection oven. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it is also a microwave. What is laughable to me is that that was your main barrier. And now that she knows I have a microwave, she's here every day. Today's Thursday. <laughs> we look like Thursday. We're dressed like Thursday. She's been here every day. She knows I've been wearing the same pants since Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's now here because she now knows my my thing that looked like an oven is a microwave. Well, now I can pe prepare my lunches to come over here and microwave them. I wasn't I didn't meal prep for this plan um, for this you know week. So I've been eating your food mostly. But <laughs> I, I wasn't prepared. I just found I literally I just found it out. Um, just, but I'll prepare now, and I will I will work over here more. Yeah. And so we'll now record in person a lot more often and actually use our studio and, and maybe give you guys more video content Eric, because I have a microwave. And You're Eric welcome. gave us permission to hold our microphones oh, instead yeah. of have them on an arm. That was another barrier because it's like so awkward to record with you without like, I don't know, with just. Yeah, with the with this little we're so stance. comfy right now. Well, yeah, we're so comfy. We got our feet up. We are lounging back, and we're looking at each other. We're looking at Thursday. Is what we're doing. We're looking at Thursday. I know that this episode's coming out None on a Friday. Come out Thursdays, but we're recording on Thursday. <laughs> we look like Thursday. Gosh, this this is an abnormally long. Episode. It is. We just had a lot to say. We, had we so haven't much recorded to say. in a week. Well, and we're in person now, so it's what yeah, you get. Yeah. Hour and a half episodes. There we go. No. <laughs> uh, nope. Are you self-conscious about your smile due to stains? Have you ever wished that you had a whiter and brighter smile? Smile Actives is a safe and affordable alternative to expensive whitening procedures. You simply add Smile Actives gel to your toothpaste every time you brush your teeth, making it the easiest teeth whitening solution out there. In a clinical trial, Smile Actives users reported up to five shades whiter on average, all within seven days. No change to your routine, no extra time. Right now, they are running a buy one, get one offer. Hurry to SmileActives.com today to receive this special offer with free shipping and handling. With the best all-inclusive vacation deals to Mexico and the Caribbean, booking your getaway with cheap Caribbean vacations means you have more freedom to do your deal. Whether you want to enjoy snorkeling, endless margaritas and more, or simply soak up the sun and sand in a tropical paradise, Cheap Caribbean Vacations has your deal for that. Plan and book the exact getaway you want at exactly the right price for you by using our exclusive budget beach finder. Or find a featured all-inclusive package to Ibera Star Hotels and Resorts and do your deal at CheapCaribbean.com. You deserve a moment to yourself every single day. And a delicious bite of a Keebler Sandies can give you that comforting pause. <sighs> Don't forget to pack the melt-in-your-mouth magic of a Keebler Sandies for a post-lunch pick-me-up. This magic is baked into simple shortbread cookies by Ernie and the Keebler Elves. So as life continues to fly by, make the most of your me moment. Take a pause and enjoy a Keebler Sandies.